Setting up a bullet journal for somebody else can be a fun creative challenge. Because it's not for you, it means that you can experiment with different layouts, try things that you wouldn't use in your normal setup, and kind of just put yourself in somebody else's shoes and think about what layouts would be most helpful for them compared to what would be helpful for yourself. Hi team, I'm Jess or Jashi Karin on behalf of the Archer and Olive Ambassador team. And in this video, we're gonna consider how to set up a journal for somebody else. As we talk through some of the considerations you might wanna make, I'm actually gonna be setting up my partner's journal. His name is Vogel. I mean, technically it's Vaughn, but his name is Vogel. And this is the third bullet journal that I've set up for him. The way that he uses his journal is quite different to how I use mine, which means that the layouts that I set up in here for him are quite different to the ones that I set up for myself. The first main consideration you're gonna wanna have when it comes to setting up a journal for someone who isn't you is do you want this to be a surprise? If you do, then hopefully you know them well and what they'll want and need. Knowing this ahead of time is going to make it a lot easier to figure out what kind of things you might want to put into the notebook. If you know there are particular areas of their life that they're going to want to organize, then you can put in layouts related to that. Or if you know they're struggling with certain pain points in terms of their productivity or creativity, then you can accommodate for that in the setup that you're doing. If you're more unsure about it though, then keeping your setup a little bit more vague or with pages that can be used in multiple ways is probably more advisable. For instance, when I've set up journals for other people who I don't necessarily know who the journal's going to, in particular things like giveaway journals where the winner hasn't been decided, I tend to take the happy medium approach in terms of what things I'm putting in there. So things that are typically quite popular in the community, you can get a lot of use out of them regardless of how you like to plan, and I leave a lot of spare space for them to add their own layouts. Another way that you can keep things a little more vague is that in setting up the layouts, just omit the headers. There are a decent chunk of layout styles that can be used in a bunch of different ways. And the only thing that's really different between one layout and another is the title that you slap onto the page. For instance, a monthly calendar could be used to capture events, appointments, that kind of thing. Or it could be used as a daily summary page. Or it could be used as a meal log or meal planner. By keeping the header off the page, you allow the journal recipient to decide how they're going to use it. If, on the other hand, this journal is not going to be a surprise, then this is a great place to be in because it means that you can ask the recipient lots of questions. Things about how they want to use the journal, what's the kind of purpose behind it, are there any layouts in particular that they've seen online that they might want to include, are there any decoration styles that they'd love to have in this new journal. When it comes to setting up Vogel's journal, I do a bit of a combination of both. In the start of journal setup, I include some layouts that I think he'd find helpful, mainly because he doesn't spend a lot of time in the journaling space, he doesn't necessarily know what's out there, but when it comes to his monthly and weekly setups, that's where I get a lot of input from him. If I were going into this setting up his layouts without having consulted him, then I'd probably do it a fair bit differently, for instance including a monthly calendar along with the weekly logs, but after talking to him, really the weekly logs by themselves are fine. He doesn't tend to use monthly calendars when they're set up, so there's not a lot of point in putting them in there. Regardless of whether this journal is going to be a surprise though, one of the first main considerations you're going to want to have is what is the purpose of the journal. What is it that your recipient is going to be using it for? A journal that you're setting up for a daily and weekly organization is going to look fairly different compared to a reading journal, which is certainly going to look different to a craft project journal or something similar. There are a lot of different ways that we can use our journals and notebooks, so making sure that you go in with a clear vision of how this is going to be used means that you can then brainstorm the layouts that can fulfill that purpose. As part of this, you might want to consider if your journal recipient has shown any particular interest in pages that you've enjoyed in your journal. If there are layouts and spreads that they've shown interest in, how can you incorporate those into their journal? Once you've outlined the purpose though, either by asking them or just brainstorming it yourself, then you can start to think about the layouts that would be useful to include in the notebook so that the purpose can be achieved. It's important to consider here any kind of systems that they're already using that kind of align with or fill this purpose. For instance, if you're looking at making a journal for organization, what other kind of organization systems do they already use? Do they already have a planner that they're using? Do they already have a digital calendar? And how can we make this new journal either a replacement for it or work alongside the things they're already using? Now it can be very tempting at this stage to think of a heap of different ideas of ways that you can fulfill the journal's purpose. All of the different layouts that you can set up and you can be really creative with it, which is a lot of fun. But we do have to be mindful that there is somebody on the other end of this that has to use the journal or at least we hope they're going to use the journal. This is something that I've certainly run into with making journals for other people, in that there are certain layouts that I'll set up, I'll spend a lot of time, effort and energy on them, and then they won't 
necessarily get used, or at least not to a level that maybe makes my heart happy. It's fine, I'm not out here policing other people and how they use their journals, and I completely understand that they're not necessarily going to be perfectly filled in. I mean, heck, my journal isn't ever perfectly filled in either. But you don't want this gift that you're making for somebody else to effectively become a burden. We don't want to jam-pack this journal with so many different layouts and spreads that they have to then keep up with as they use their notebook. Effectively, we don't want our gift to this person to be homework. Another consideration to make when undertaking this project is how much of the journal are you going to set up for them? Is it going to be a fully set up journal where you have all of the layouts structured out and they just have to come in and populate them with their own information, so tasks, events, notes, anything else? Or are you going to have a very minimally set up journal, possibly just some very simple structures that they can then decorate around? or maybe even decorated pages that they can build structures onto depending on what they need. The in-between zone of this is a partially set up journal, so maybe just setting up the monthly pages and then having spare space to put their weekly spreads in, or even just the start of journal setup and then space after this left open for anything that they're going to need after the fact. Obviously there is quite a range of options here and it very much depends on who you're setting the journal up for, how much work they'd like you to do versus how much work you want to do, because unless you're going to have access to this journal after the fact, setting up an entire journal all at once can be a lot of work. If we're thinking about the types of journals you use, how much time do you spend daily, weekly, monthly setting up those layouts? If you're wanting to give this to another person as a gift and you're not necessarily going to have access to the journal after the fact, then you're going to have to do all of those months of work before you give it to them. When I set up my journal for each new month, it can take a hot minute and doing all of that work in one fell swoop at the end of the year to give it to them for the beginning of the next can be quite a task. Thankfully for the journal that we're setting up in this video, I do have access to it because I live with my partner. And most of the time this year, I have been able to set it up before the month starts. Notably, when I was setting this one up, it was the end of August, moving into September. Once you've sorted out what you're going to be putting in the journal for them though, and how much of the journal you're going to set up, then it's time to think about the setup itself. In particular, how much time is it going to take us? As can be expected, if you're going to be doing more decorative work or more detailed work in the journal, or in particular the style of decoration that's a little bit time intensive, then we're going to need to allow plenty of time to get that set up. I do very much encourage you to start early. For instance, if I was trying to set up a journal for someone else for the new year, I'd want to start probably about two months before that, just so that I can pace my work on the journal so I don't get hand cramps and kind of like creative burnout and anything. Especially if it's already happening around a season where you're trying to set up your own journal too. We want to make sure you still have some creativity for your own one. Although it can be a bit of work planning and designing a notebook for somebody else, it is also a really special thing. Handmade gifts that are done with time, love and attention should always be cherished. And so if you're planning a journal for somebody else, I really hope that they love it. I'd love to know though, have you planned a journal for somebody else before? Who was it for? What kind of journal were you setting up? As said, I've done ones for my partner before, I've done one for my best friend, I've done multiple giveaway journals where I set up the layouts for somebody else, and they always present a really fun creative challenge. This setup is ready to go to Vogel though, hopefully he's looking forward to the new month in his journal. But if you are looking for more journal inspiration, then either of these videos is worth checking out next. Click or tap on either of those, and thanks for watching.